I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, are you ready to receive today? Come on now, let's declare this word. Say after me, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now. Angels are bringing good things to me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, you know, I love the way Jesus coined it. It says, give us this day our daily bread. It, it just lets me know that we are not begging. We are making a demand for what is ours. <laughs> Praise God. Now, that's to tell you that it's actually a New Testament thing. Because he's not saying, give us daily bread. Say, give us our. So, Jesus was affirming that the Father knows that he's got daily bread reserved for us. Praise God. Are you ready for today's broadcast? Oh, I've got many great things to share with you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for your anointing that is present and available to everyone listening right now. And I declare that every body in their lives is being lifted right now, even through your word. And yokes are destroyed right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now we are in Hebrews chapter 7. Praise God. We, I was describing the man Melchizedek to you. And we're talking about how this relates with how God sees to it. He didn't just mean when Abraham says he sees to it. He wasn't just talking about a one-time thing. He is talking about the nature and character of God. That he is the God who sees to it. Now, is that what you experience in your life? If not, then you haven't come in to the character of God yet. You haven't understood, you haven't started fellowshipping with his real personality yet. You know, now, now let me show you something here. You know, talking about Jesus. I was telling you yesterday that it was made when Melchizedek met Abraham that he taught Abraham concerning tithing. You see, because it is one of the eternal principles that God established. Tithing is one of the external principles, one of the eternal. When I mean eternal, because everything God does, God is an eternal God. So everything he does has um, an eternal value. So you must understand the purpose of everything that he does. So why would God show up and teach Abraham concerning the tithes? Now, when you read that, st that story in the book of Genesis, you just say, oh, Melchizedek came and he came with bread and wine. Now, hold on. Just hold on to that thought. He came with bread and wine. And then the Bible says he was a priest of the Most High God. And then he blessed Abraham. And then the Bible said Abraham gave him tithe of all. And then that's all you read about. And then you wonder, maybe that meeting didn't even last up to five minutes. Hey, it, it was a long meeting. Say, so how do I know it was a long meeting? I'll tell you. Abraham leaving that meeting, and then he goes to meet the king of Sodom. And when he got there, the king said something to him. He said, hey, Abraham, thank you so much. You've, you're, you're a lifesaver. So, but now, you see, why don't you just give us our wives and children and keep all the goods that you, you got back? Because actually, they, they belong to Abraham now. They are called the spoils of war. Praise <laughs> God. But Abraham now said, nah, 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 nah. And then he made a very strong statement. He said, I have sworn. Maybe we should go there. Let's go there. So, you see it yourself. You see this yourself. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 
Genesis chapter 14. From verse 18. And Melchizedek, Genesis 14 verse 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered thy enemies into thy hands. And he gave him tithes of all. See that? Now, Melchizedek came and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. And then he now said, Blessed be the Most High God who had delivered. So Melchizedek knew Abraham had come from the victory of that war. So he knew. Then he says, when he, when he blessed him, now the, even the salutation, the kind of blessing, see. Then the Bible now says, And Abraham gave him a tithe of all. Now that was the conclusion he gave. He didn't say what made him give him tithe of all. Now I'm telling you that what happened. Now watch this now. And verse 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom. Now watch what he said. I have lift up my hand unto the Lord. The most high, watch this now, the possessor of heaven and earth. That I will not take from a tread even to a shoe latchet. And that I will not take anything that is thine. Lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abraham rich. Did you see that? Watch this now. The king said, Abraham, yes, thank you, yes. Now, you know what? Why don't you take all these things that you brought? Just give us the persons, give us the human beings and take every other thing. And Abraham now said, uh-uh. Watch what he said. I have lifted up my hands unto the Lord. You see what he said? He said, I have lifted up my hands unto the Lord. Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Now you remember the salutation and the blessing of Melchizedek. Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Now that was the salutation he brought to Abraham. Now you find Abraham talking to someone else and he says, I have lifted up my hand to the Lord Most High, possessor of of heaven and earth. The same phrase that came out of Melchizedek. Now, what does that tell you? That should let you know that the one who Abraham lifted up his hands to was Melchizedek. Now, what does that tell you? That tells you that Melchizedek was the one Abraham referred to as the Lord. And he, he, he said capital L-O-R-D. Now, when you see that, uh, that's another day's talk, praise God. But you see, he knew who he was referring to. And he says, that's the one I lifted up my hand to. And that was Melchizedek he was talking about. So, so what do you think happened there? Melchizedek came, visited it with Abraham, taught him concerning tithing. And Abraham accepted to tithe. And when he did, Melchizedek said to him one last thing. He said, okay, what is it? He said, I want you to swear before me. So lift up your right hand. Abraham said, okay. Lifted up his right hand. And he said, I want you to say this, that you will not take anything from these goods. Now remember, he had given him tithe of all. I'll tell you about that. So he said, lift up your right hand. And he lifted up his hand. He said, say after me, I, Abraham, I, Abraham, will not take, will not take anything, anything that belongs to the king of Sodom and all these spoils. Right. He said, Abraham, like, but they are mine. He said, I don't want you to take it. 
He said, he has just tithed. He has just given his tithe. You know, people don't understand these things. When, when I say people argue, is tithing important? It's that they are so ignorant. I, I'm telling you, they're very ignorant. With all due respect on who, who you are, that you, you, you think from all sincerity and honesty. I, I didn't say you're wicked. I say you are ignorant. It's ignorance. Praise God. It's ignorance that will make you say there is no reason to tithe. Because you have not asked the Lord. Now that's why I say you're ignorant. You have not, when you say someone say you're ignorant, it's not a curse. He's just telling you, go study some more, go find out some more. So you have not asked the Lord concerning it. That's why you are speaking like that. And, and when you hear, because sometimes I take time to listen to such arguments. Yeah, I do. Because maybe I'll learn something. But you find out that their argument is human human reasoning no word of the lord even though they quote scriptures the fact that somebody is quoting the bible doesn't mean he's giving you the word of the lord so so you listen to their arguments and, and, and it's a very lame argument very lame that's 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 not for people whose mind have been renewed at all that's for that's for religious people who want to you know religious people who want to be intellectuals so they begin to look at this and they compare this and they, they compare this. And then, but you see, that's not what we do with the word of God. The word of God is given from above. You hear it from above. When you hear the word of God from above, then you now look into the scriptures. It begins to make sense. You don't argue with scriptures and then now take an opinion. Now that's why you have in most most Bible schools. Most Bible schools never give a, a final answer. They only give opinions. Yeah, if you've gone to a Bible school, you will know. They only give opinions. They say, this person thinks this way, this person thinks this way. Now you, what is your own thought concerning it? Even if you give your own thought, it will not be taken into account. Because like, oh, that's, 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 that sounds intelligent. But that's where it stops. Praise <laughs> God. All right then. So, he now told Abraham, don't take any of these things because you've just given your tithe. Now, because you have given your tithe, I want you to watch me bless you. And that's exactly what happened. He began, Abraham began to enjoy the blessing of God like no other. Now, we are talking, now let's go back to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 7. And then he's talking about Abraham and talking about Melchizedek and, and saying that Jesus was made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. There was a reason that was done. Now, just follow me. We're in verse 4 now. It says, Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi who receive the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithe of the people according to the law. Now he's comparing this earthly priesthood and the priesthood of Melchizedek. Then he says, that is of their brethren, though they came out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithe of Abraham. Are you getting it now? All right, and blessed him that had the promise. Follow now, verse seven. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Now, what's he saying? He brought in Levites, and then he said Abraham was greater than the Levites because they came out of his loins. Right now, he now said, but this man Melchizedek blessed Abraham, and we know that. The less is blessed of the greater. What's he saying? So, Levite is less than Abraham. But this man, Melchizedek Abraham, met, blessed Abraham. So, it means this man, Melchizedek, was greater than Abraham. Are you following now? And then he goes on in verse 8 and says, And here, men that die receive tithe. But there he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth. 
Let's look at, he, if, you, if you read the whole chapter, he began to analyze and talk about comparing the priesthood of Moses and of Aaron and the Levites to that of Melchizedek. Now verse 17 says, For he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Praise God. <laughs> Our time is already up for today. Listen, I, I pray God gives us uh, a way to shorten this thing. But I'm trying to get you to understand something. We're driving somewhere. So I don't want you to miss tomorrow's broadcast. Praise God. Oh, I bless God for your life. And I declare today you will see the hand of the Lord walking in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.